Hey, it's Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday. It's October the 23rd. This will be our chart lesson for today. And there's even though there's a downward bias, um, it looks more like a trading range. At least it has since the last hour or two. Um, it's about 115 now. I already did the chart lesson once today and I didn't have any sound when I got through so I'm doing this a second time so it's probably going to be a little quicker through this time and I apologize uh, I'll try to still cover everything but uh, I'm really doing this a second time because of my own stupidity I forgot to turn my headphones on so I was just talking to myself today instead of talking to the recorder uh, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes fairly easy trading day I got tripped up once today uh, didn't really cost me any money, but um, I did get tripped up, and I'll, I'm marked with that and kind of the lavender color here, and I'll talk about that and show you what, tell you, explain to you what happened to me, and if any other of us got tripped up there. Uh, looking back on it, I don't know why I got tripped up there, but I did. So, uh, but I'll explain what I saw there and why I got tripped up and how I got fooled, and. Uh, but other than that, it was a fairly straightforward day. I was done early today. Uh, I got a couple of emails from people that said, "Hey, it was fairly straightforward for them too." They made because the thing is, if you were if you saw the channel, the kind of downward channel, you know, most of the moves off the top were really strong, and uh, and so it wasn't that hard to trade this. Um, I really meant to. Mark this one in green too. Uh, forgot it, but uh, let's talk about the trades that I saw through. Uh, this was the last trade uh, about when I stopped around 11 o'clock, and I didn't haven't really seen. You might have considered going long there on that trap, but um, you know, other than that, I haven't really seen anything I liked in here. Um, but let's talk about. Let's back out and talk about it. You could have seen it two ways. Hopefully you saw it both ways. It, it really started out looking like a channel uh, or a trading range. But then, it, you know, quickly you should have been able to find this. I originally had this maybe right off those closes like so. Um, if you drew that and you drug it down, then you would have found that bounce right off those lows right there. Uh, but a lot of times people can't do that that well that you know they aren't good enough to do that but so but there's still enough reasons for the trading range um, and you should have known the bias was down uh, but you couldn't have, you couldn't ignore this either um, I drew these two in green when I came in this this channel had been here since you know two you know almost a little before 3 a.m. this morning through the open today so you couldn't ignore that. And all this is is a correction. Uh, a measured move on this would put your, you know, put your target way down here, and we haven't even got close to it. So that's leading me to believe that we may bounce out of here and go higher. Because generally, if you can't reach a target, you come up short, then prices are going to go more in the other direction, and we may end up breaking lower and reaching that before the day's over. But uh, at this point. I would say, hey, we're late. We should have already made that target by now. And uh, we'll just have to see what happens. But uh, but your buy, overall buys should have been down. And this one I'm looking at a, a move up, and this one I'm looking at a move down. They're both very aggressive. This one because uh, I like this one to the long side uh, because you had the channel working up. You can't, you can't deny that channel right there. You get the break and you try to go lower twice. Notice that you got a new high, you go down, pull back and you go down again. So you got two tries to go lower. It's a failed second entry short. Uh, it is a second entry long as well. You're coming down first entry, pull back second entry. You're looking for a retest, which it got, but it only retested the trend the trend line and you don't but you don't know that uh, most of the time you're gonna get a new high a lot of times you're gonna get two legs but the overall bias is down at this point so um, you know it's a look and there look at all that overlap in there uh, just a lot of reasons to be real this is one that I probably would definitely recommend using a 
a limit order, but you you couldn't have got filled more than right there at the high. If you went even one tick in, you probably didn't get filled unless you got filled when it came back here, and then you just get ran right on through. Um, but if you did get go long here, if you if you took that trade, I, I think it's aggressive. But if you took it uh, because it does look pretty good, and there is a trap. Uh, so if you did take that uh, and you got in with a stop, when you saw that little do when you saw the stem here and then the doji, um, I would have at least tightened my stop to one tick below that. I probably would have just exited it instantly. Um, you know, somebody asked me about that yesterday. Very rarely do I exit, but that's one of the clues. There's some clues here that this thing is about to turn over. And when it couldn't go any higher there, and that's basically, that's really just a double top. You can see that. If you move that out of the way, you can see we had that one tick. Then we come back and we couldn't even get through that high this time. Um, but the clues are that, you know, notice this last break higher went only one tick. You didn't go very far. And then all of a sudden you get a low here that's lower than this low, lower than that low, and even lower than that low because it went lower, broke up, and then came back down again and then went higher. So there's plenty of reason to be concerned that this thing is about to roll over, although usually you'll get a new high. Sometimes you don't. It basically made a double top. Uh, but it's in a downtrend and the bias is down. So uh, enough reasons to be concerned about that, and uh, but then and it is a second entry short off that new high, but it's the first break. It's the first. This is the first a break below that bar is really the first time you're looking for a short there. Um, so I think it was a little aggressive. Uh, it's, it's too big a chance we could have broke lower and trapped people and then run up and made a new high and then started working over. So I was a little. Uh, hesitant about both of those actually on um, you could have once this bar set up and was that bearish you might have thought about using a limit order uh, a tick or so back in that or maybe right at the end and then you could have taken that down because that's pretty bearish off that double top so uh, but again it's it's really aggressive so you got to be careful with it but then guess what you get a, a little breakout pullback short here trap and it's right off this trend line and you could have easily gotten it off the lows and drug it up if you didn't have it right off the highs and when it turned down there again and notice I made this circle bigger because there's really two opportunities to enter you could have entered short uh, right here uh, below that bar uh, or you could have waited on this one because it's kind of a little pullback and it tests that trend line again and then it kind of confirms it and you got plenty of room to get out before these next lows over here. So I like that one. This is really just some kind of like congestion here too, a little small congestion. It's like a breakout pullback. I like that entry better, but you could have gone short right there. Um, so I made that circle a little bigger, and both of them are easy moves. I didn't like going long because everything is down at this point. There's a good chance we're going to get a measured move. You got this little channel. This is the first break, but notice we pull back and test it. But look, it ends as a doji. You don't want to be going long here uh, because you don't know that this is a range day or a channel or a trend yet. It's still a downtrend. The bias is definitely down here, and this looks just like a correction. And if you're looking for your measured move, remember it was way down here somewhere. So I didn't like going long right here at all. Uh, you definitely don't want to take a first entry there. Uh, but hey, a second entry, usually I would like. But look, it's three overlapping bars. Two of them are dojis. You're still below the EMA. Uh, no reason to go long there. Uh, but I, I semi like this one because notice this new low, first entry pullback. And even though we didn't break lower here, it looks like a failed second entry short. Uh, it got above the EMA. It pulls back and tests it, and then it opens on its low and closes almost on its high. So I like to go along right above that like a failed second entry trap. Um, I like that trade because then, I'm, you know, it's really looking kind of rangy at that point. Uh, you know, you had another chance to go lower, and it couldn't. It's right off this trend line. Uh, drawing it right off those first couple of swings. I had it originally like that. And, um, it, you know, I, I like that trade. Um, and it's, but it is aggressive, so I drew it in green. Easy scalp. 
I was looking for it to come back up here or either here or here and notice it doesn't quite get there and uh, and that's what tricked me here but I'm now that after the fact I'm thinking this line I, I later I moved it down to there and then I'm thinking hey I just had my line wrong and you know we weren't down to the low line in yet so it wasn't time to go long I just got fooled here and if I'd been paying attention and you know saying hey this is the first break and generally we're going to get a retest and that should have kept me out of a long and then it's overlapping but we'll get to there in a minute but uh, anyway I like this long I think it's aggressive because it's not a perfect setup but I liked it then you're coming off the highs up here you don't want to be taking that first entry uh, but then it tried to go higher again and uh, and it broke higher and turned down and closed on its low I liked that setup easy move back down um, then you get a failed second entry long here uh, this one notice notice there's some overlap this one didn't quite close on its low this is one where I'd use a limit order and generally I like to use um, the close of the inside the bar so when this closed I would have waited on prices to break lower and then put my limit order right there where that one closed and see if I could get filled and it did get filled there it would get filled and um, and notice what happens there. You're in at 17.38, and it goes to 37. You got a couple extra ticks by doing it that way. Uh, if even if you put it right at the top, 75, you still would have got out. But if you entered with a stop there, uh, 37.50. Notice you would have got a four tick. It would have been a four tick. You might have got filled there on a stop. I don't know if a, a limit order because look how many times it tested that level. Um, but it couldn't go any lower there. So once you start to see all these matching lows at the end of a big move swing down like that, and that's not a good sign. So if you didn't get filled, if you used a stop and didn't get filled, I would have exited here especially when it broke above that bar um, and that would have got you out at least break even maybe lost a tick or something there uh, but when that happened I thought we had a higher low and we'd probably go higher we were coming back up to this line I'm thinking hey we aren't quite there yet no wonder we're coming up there anyway and uh, that's where I got fooled right there but looking back on that that's not a very good setup and that's why you you know, you got to try to use, you know, even if you can read the price action really good, sometimes you get fooled, and I got fooled there. Uh, uh, but notice all that overlap, stems on both sides. Um, you know, looking back on that, I should have never taken that trade. Um, and I know at least one other person got tri tripped up there. It didn't come by, it didn't haunt me because of the way I entered. Um, but... I was wrong there because I thought we were going higher and we didn't and we turned down and then you got to go short right here on the second entry short uh, big bearish bar uh, again you might have thought about a limit order because it's a little bigger uh, I didn't like going short below this one because it's you know it's got too much stem on it but this is a nice bearish reversal bar and hey and we're you know you're looking for a retest of this low and probably a test of the trend channel line down here and look, it goes straight to where you expect it to go and then bounces. So um, if you saw that trade right there, I liked it. Good setup. Had, had longs trapped. Um, let's move that back. Um, then, of course, the bias is down. So you really don't want to buy these low sides. Uh, but you had these nice two legs down. Um, it looks kind of like a trading range as well, and generally you can fade every new low and every new high. So if you wanted to be aggressive, you might have taken this, but look at those two overlap. This, even though this is real bullish, it's inside this bar. Couldn't break above it. That's not a really good sign, um, but it did, you know, it turned out to be a good trade. So if you saw it and you took it because of, you know, and you were following range rules, you know, it fits the rules. And it's a little aggressive because it, the way it's set up, and because there's really a downward buy still, um, you know, it, it, if you took it good, uh, I wasn't brave enough to take that one. 
I waited on the sec I would rather wait on the second entry right here. And this first bar was a doji. Um, but then when you got this one that bounced right there, opened on its low, closed on its very high, put a stop right there, boom, off it goes. And you're looking for it to come up to the highs. And after that, I move this back to the highs and it fits a little better. And you can see we're just kind of stuck there trying to get above that and we can't really get above it. Um, and then there's a failed second entry short right here. Um, but we just come off the high, so it was a little risky. But you figure, you know, you got this little channel here. It seems to be fitting perfectly. So you figure it's going to go back up. And look, it breaks. It gets two legs up. Doesn't quite make a new high, but it can't because of the resistance up here. Uh, too many people are looking to sell. Uh, but it, was a, it did work as a scalp if you took it. I think it's real aggressive because you just come off the high. And then... You had a chance to go short here uh, off a double top, but it's usually better to wait on the second entry, which didn't come to here. You could count this as a second entry, but that bar is so big. There's a, you know, it didn't, it couldn't get through the EMA, and then it bounced. Uh, if you went short below that, it would have worked. You would have had to ride back the pullback. Uh, but if you were going to enter there, that's one I'd probably use a limit order, drop it a few ticks back in there so that you can get it outside of these highs with a two-point stop without taking anything bigger than that. Um, but then we got, let me move some of this out of the way. It's hard to see this. But notice we broke higher and then turned down. So I liked going short there, but again, it, it ended as a doji. So, I, I, you know, I'm thinking, hey, um, I don't really like that. But when this one turn down again and close on its very low. Again, it's a big bar, so you probably want to think about a limit order, and it would have gotten filled all the way back to here. You can see it went one tick further than that. So you could have gotten filled way back in that bar, but at least a tick or two, and then it turns into an easy scout. But even if you use a stop there and kept your, kept your a buy stop right there, or a sell stop, uh, and had your safety stop up here, you still were good. So um, even above this bar, and somebody asked me that in one of the a question um, about about what about if if you know if a, your stop is it takes more than two points. Well, you either have to use a limit order to get inside your two points. Let's just assume that we want to enter, even though I'm not saying this is a good short. Just just assume because so, it's easy to see. Uh, well, let's find one better. Let's use this one. Let's say we want to go short right here on a break below that bar. Um, that would make your entry at 39 and a quarter. And guess what? You can only go to 49 and a quarter to stay within the two, the two uh, point stop. So you can't get above that. So what you got to do is you either got to be happy with your stop right there, or you got to try to use a limit order to get your stop. A tick or two above that and use that to, to gauge it that's all, or either skip the trade that's really the best you can do with it uh, but on really good trades you know you don't always have to get above the signal bar although that's going to be the most logical safest place for your stop and you can see so far we've gone one tick above that and uh, probably stopped out a lot of people now will probably turn down and go lower we'll have to see um, what happens but you know that's that's how I would address that I would either say okay it's too much to use a stop if I if I enter here with a with a sale stop then my my stop has to go to no more than two points so I just have to leave it right there at the high and you can see you would have got stopped out on that already and got not gotten anything or I could try to put a limit order further back up in here and Hope, see if I get filled and then my stops up here above maybe even this high or at least you know I like to keep my stop two ticks above the signal bar because look how many times just like right here so far one tick higher and they stopped everybody out it wouldn't surprise me to see it go lower now because that's what they like to do they they trick everybody and they 
they, they get you sucked in and they run your stops and, and then they go right where you thought it was going to go anyway. That happens so often. So I hope that is clear to everybody on how you want to enter that. you, you got to stay within your two-point stop. Um, you know, I hate to say this because a bunch of you will start doing it and you'll lose more money, but if you're really confident that you're reading the price action right, um, you know, you might enter and just go ahead and give it one more tick. So you give it two points in one tick. Uh, but I don't recommend that. I think you'd be better off just to enter, if you want if you want to enter this with a stop, just enter it with a stop and let your safety stop be up here. And just and you know you would have gotten stopped out. Uh, but if you'd have went one tick higher, you'd have still got stopped out and give them one more tick. Now, if you went two ticks higher, you might survive this, which is yet to be seen. And it may turn down and go right where you thought. So, um, but generally, I would just say, don't break the rule on the two-point stop. That's your safest bet. Make sure you don't lose any money, um, you know, more than two points, and leave it at that. So, uh, but that's about it for today. I, I'm going to wrap it up. I've done, like I said, this has probably felt like I breezed through that one a little quicker, uh, but that's my second time to do it. So, but I'm going to wrap it up. I hope you had a good trading day. Uh, hopefully you recognized. Just remember this too. Whenever prices are on both sides of the EMA like that, that's a good sign that even though this is a downward uh, channel or a channel with a downward bias, it's still a trading range type channel. Uh, and you can just see that prices are swinging from both sides. I'm sorry, my phone is ringing off the hook. But uh, you can see prices swinging from both sides, and uh, that's generally a good sign that it's a trading range. And you can generally fade every new low and every new high. And this was a new low here. This was actually a new high because it's higher. Uh, it's higher than that. But the best way I like to do that rule is not new highs like that, but new low for the day or new high for the day. And you see that was. Uh, that was a new low for the day, and really the only new high we had was right there, but you had a new high for the day all the way up through here, and that was the first one that worked. So you couldn't really do it with that channel working up, but once you see that it's a trading range, um, and, and you might have considered this a new high from the 8.30 open. Um, actually, no, it's still not because you're, you're up here. Um, so... Anyway, generally, once you recognize you're in a trading range, you can fade every new high and every new low. And, if, and you can see that we've kind of got a, a range across here. It looks more like a range now. And look what happened over here. We broke low and we're trying to trade. We still haven't started really trading lower yet. Uh, but you can see what I was telling you, that one tick. That's why I like to use two if I can. And, uh, and now it's headed down, headed right where you would have thought it might be headed before if you when you were entering over here. So that's a good example of that. But uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up, call it a day. I hope you had a good trading day. Um, and uh, if not, hopefully you'll have a better one tomorrow. But we'll be back to do this again tomorrow. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.